Welcome to Integrity's February XSS Challenge. Every month, Integrity runs a really cool challenge where you can hack into a web page. And if you do, then you submit a report and you have a chance at winning some amazing swag. So every month, six people earn some really cool Integrity swag by solving this challenge. So if you don't want to miss out of that in the future, then follow us on Twitter. And if you want to practice your skills on the previous challenges, then check out this blog post where we cover them all. But today we're looking at February's XSS challenge created by none other than Dr. Leak, who creates some amazing YouTube videos. Um, and he is this little leak that we see on the screen right now. And in this challenge, we can create our own official leak NFT. So we can give this guy um, some cool mustache or, or a cute face. So let's, let's make a fun guy here. We can give him an eyebrow or some cool lead glasses. And we can also give this guy some amazing accessories. Um, so really fun challenge, really stu cool stuff. So how cool is this for a challenge? I love it. So then we can give this guy a specific background. So let's give it uh, the Integrity logo as a background. We can submit that query, our file gets uploaded, and then we can press save. And that brings us to a view page where we can now view this little man, uh, this little leak with our background. And it's all super, super cool. Now, this is what we have to find an XSS in. And well, the web page is kind of limited in functionality. We can kind of change these static values here uh, and, and give, give this guy another look, but we can't really do much besides that. There's no input fields. There's nothing we can actually input except for the file that we upload. And if we save our little guy, we see that this person has an image name and an image comment. The comment is currently set to none. So maybe it's worth it to just check out the source code or the, the front-end JavaScript code that is managing all of this information. So let's just inspect this page, go into the debugger, and let's scro scroll down to find uh, some code. And here we immediately find some JavaScript. So this first chunk of JavaScript code, it is going to grab the uh, window.location.search. And then gonna convert that into a URL search params so that it can get the uh, get parameter view ID. And it's then gonna uh, set the source of a specific element to be uh, a link with our view ID. Uh, it's also gonna set a share link that has a specific value. And this is using DOM Purify to sanitize it. Um, so that's the first script. The second script then is a bit more interesting uh, because this is gonna. When the window loads, it's going to run the get data function, which is this function. It is going to grab an element view display and it's going to get the exif data of that image. Now, what is exif data? Exif data is kind of extra data in an image. And, and we can go into the terminal and use exif tool, a great tool uh, to kind of view that data on this, for example, integrity.jpg file. And here we can see stuff like. Um, the mime type, the resolution of certain things, um, and all of that interesting stuff. Here we see that the profile copyright is apparently Google Inc. 2016. No idea what any of this means, but it's just extra information, EXIF data about this image. So it seems like this EXIF data from an image is being parsed. We're then gonna run uh, exif.get tag on our user comment, and then we're gonna convert that or do a string from shark code apply on our user comments and do this weird stuff in it that I don't fully understand. And if I see a weird code that I don't fully understand, I usually just skip it and see if it's actually useful to actually understand this stuff. Um, we then are also going to get the date time original tag and we're going to get the owner name. Now, one thing that's interesting is that on our web page, we see that the image comment is currently none. And that's because this image probably doesn't have the tag user comment. So we can probably later try to change the user comment of our image and see if that updates on the page. Then we go scroll down to this piece here where we have some comments where it says that Dave was the intern here. And Dave says that, uh, well, coding is fairly easy and that Dave will fix some bugs after his coffee break. Um, so sure, I think Dave is a, a great intern. And well, Dave says there are some bugs here, so we should probably go and find those bugs. 
So Dave is first of all going to get a bunch of elements. It's then going to see if values are undefined. It's going to set them to none. And that is probably what we see up here. The image comment has become none because it was probably undefined in our image. Then we have this interesting construct here where we have an image object that's a string and it's then going to get JSON parsed and goes through an object.assign. Very weird code here, but uh, because also this object here uses or strings just plain in the object. So this, this reeks of vulnerability. So definitely something we want to play around with. And following all of that, we have a try statement. It's going to try to stringify our object. It's going to print out that it's working on our object. It's then going to parse our object once again. Okay. Then it's going to set with inner HTML, the image name to be temp.image name, which is, which comes from our object where we kind of control some things. So very interesting. Uh, and this is actually uh, where an unintended solution that I will show after the intended solution comes from. Um, but following that, we also have the inner HTML for the image comments, the created by and the owner. But all of these are using DOM Purify and are being sanitized with the latest version of DOM Purify. And I don't know any zero days in that, so uh, not something we can bypass. However, there is also a catch statement here. And in this catch statement, it's going to set the same uh, elements using inner HTML, but it's not going to use a DOM Purify for the comment, for example. So Maybe your goal should be to kind of enter this try statement, throw an exception, enter a sketch statement, and then have our uh, comment be some kind of uh, payloads that will trigger an XSS. So I think that's a good uh, ID. Okay, so now let's check out what actually happens if we try to set that user comment field in our image. And to do that, we're also gonna use exif tool and we're gonna use dash user comment equals, and then we can say, for example, hello world. So now we've updated the image and now we can go back to the web page, reload it, select our image once again, submit it and save. And now we see that our comment now has hello world as the data here. So, okay, we know that our user input is ending up there, which means that obviously in our um, source code, our user input is reaching this specific statement. So with that information, we also know that our user input is being inputted in this weird statement here. So let's take a closer look at what's going on here. So I'm gonna grab a terminal here because we have a, an interesting construct where we have a json.parse happening on user inputs and then an object.assign. So let's see what that exactly means and what we can do with that because um, yeah, let's try to do a json.parse of an object that we create. So our object can have a key A and a field B and json.parse will then well, create that object. Now an object.assign of that will uh, also do something. So let's see what that does. So an object.assign and we're assigning to an empty object our object that we just parsed that will just result in the same type of object. Now, one of the things that you can think of here is, well, what about prototype pollution? Will that work? And of course, uh, json.parse has some protections against prototype pollution. So if we try to inject here a key underscore underscore proto underscore underscore setting, um, for example, the two string to be equal to one, uh, Will that work? Well, let's find out. So if I do exactly that, then we see that our object A has a key A, B, but also has a key underscore underscore proto set to this object. So it did not actually change the prototype. And this is because json.parse is not vulnerable to prototype pollution in this way. It's set up securely, so it doesn't actually change the prototype. But what now happens if we run an object dot assign on this. So we're going to assign this specific object to uh, an empty object. And when we do that, we see that now it only has the key A uh, colon B. It doesn't have that proto key anymore because now that has actually been applied to the prototype of this specific object. And this is actually not prototype pollution, but this is prototype 
poisoning. And the biggest difference between prototype pollution and prototype poisoning is that when you pollute, uh, when you do a prototype pollution, you're actually polluting the global object or the global uh, array or, or whatever. So every object from there on will then have that prototype. Whereas in this case, we're really only polluting the X object, right? So now we have polluted the X object. And now if we want to uh, run, for example, to string on B, we will see that it will return one. So, okay, with armed with that knowledge that that might be something we can do, um, let's take a look at what that would well, lead us to. Well, in that case, that case we're going to enter this try loop. We're going to stringify our input. And we're then going to do this working on x dot two string. We just saw that if we change the prototype and set the true string to string function to, for example, one, then that in that case we are well, it will throw an error. Throwing an error will lead us to execute this catch here, and this catch will then uh, allow us to have a comment with some uh, XSS payload in it. So that's quite interesting. And in order to get this error to work, we would need to, uh, of course, put our payloads inside of this specific string. So let's see if we can do that. So I'm going to clear the screen here. Uh, and this is going to be our payloads. There's going to be some inputs here and some inputs here. So let's play around with that, with that specific input here. So what if we inject a quote here um, and then a comma? And then we inject our proto key. So we inject our proto key with the value that we just discussed. So that's uh, two string being set to one. So once we've injected that, we would then obviously also want to make sure that this is not a broken, um, this is not broken, uh, a broken object or broken JSON. So we fix it up like that. And now we could set uh, anything we want as the comment here. So we could, for example, have an image with source X and an on error of alert. Uh, so we set that to the comment. And now our payload looks like this whole thing. So we now put that payload into our image. There we go. Uh, we put that in there. And now we go and upload the image and see what actually happens. So let's go back, reload this, select that file. We then submit the query. Okay, that's all done. We save and we see that we actually get our XSS pop-up and that we have actually solved this challenge. Um, you can also see that the comment now is this broken image. So uh, we have figured out a way to get an XSS to work using that prototype poisoning. But this was actually an unintended solution, or this was actually the intended solution to the challenge. There is also an unintended solution that I want to cover with you guys. And that unintended solution uh, all comes down from the fact that this object allows us to do a lot of things and that here we set the inner HTML of the name field without DOM purifying the image name because, well, we figured, well, this object has a static image name. But what if we overwrite this image name later on here in the object? So let's do it exactly that. Let's go back into the console. Can I still get my previous command back? Doesn't look like it. Um, so let's quickly copy this string once again. Okay. So we want to create an object where the data that we enter will create a new key in this JSON object. And that key is going to be image name as well. And then we hope that the last key is taken. So, okay, we can close uh, off this image comment, set a comma, create a new key, image name, and set that new key image name again to be an image with a source of X and an on error equal to alert. Then we just fix up the end of our little payload here. So um, something like this. And now we just set that as the image comment for our image. So let's do exactly that. Uh, change this around to be the user comments of our actual image. And with that done, we just have to go back to this page. We reload once again, upload our image. And we now save. And we see that that also works and that also gives us a, a nice XSS here. And that was the unintended solution to this challenge. 
So uh, that has been it for this video once again. I hope you enjoyed this challenge. I hope you love the looks of it and that you also kind of learn something new while trying to solve it. I think this was a great challenge for beginners because of that unintended solution um, and all the source code or all the code is in the front end in JavaScript. So it's easy to look at, easy to debug. Um, if you weren't able to solve it, a trick here would be to set some breakpoints so you can actually see in uh, while the code is running, what is actually going on and where your input is, is going through. If you have any questions, as always, leave them down below in the comments. Follow us on Twitter to not miss out on these challenges in the future. And if you liked it, well, like the video, leave a comment, and I hope to see you here next month with yet another challenge. That has been it. Take care, guys.